is an honor and a pleasure once again here on our Commando New Media Show because I didn't want bosses to whom to answer. Yeah, and so you're about to hear a two-hour commercial-free program. And the reason is because this is exclusively subscriber-based. And I'm uh, eternally grateful for being able to do this in the manner in which I want to be able to do it, commercial-free, and uh, without uh, having a phone that's going to ring with a boss that says to say something or not say something. I also won't be associated with an entity that tells me what to say or not to say. I have to tell you, what's it been? Five years I've been with Fox. I'll be with them another year, by the way. They have never told me what to say or not to say. Ever. It's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. So that uh, is uh, how I roll here. So I've gotten tons of emails, as you might imagine, and I think maybe a lot of... uh, New people are listening today because, look, there was the segment last night on O'Reilly. Let's just get this out of the way because then we have to deal with Urkel and him wanting another $300 billion. Oh, he's not over. He's not stopping. And we've always talked in this war that there are two fronts. Getting rid of Barack Obama, it's like doing a house remodel. Yeah, you need to knock down the old house. Every now and then I watch that show on, I think it's HGTV, I think it's from Canada, this Holmes on Holmes, and he goes in there, and he's a contractor guy, and he cleans up and fixes what other loser contractors did. That's the place now of the Tea Party, we're that Holmes guy. Because what's been put into place and built by the Republican machine is a disaster, violating every single conservative code that there is. So the issue is not only do we want to knock down the house, and when you've, God, as you'll hear Ann Coulter refer to Obama having a glass jaw, it's true. But what are you going to put up there? Knocking something down that is a menace. Americans have done that. That's like our career as Americans. That's that's what we do. We We fix crap. Even if we start it ourselves, we'll fix it. Uh, but our tendency to what we put into place there in the, in the remodel, in the rebuild, has been crap. Requiring constant knockdowns. Because for some reason, it's the best we can do. He's the only contractor. He's the next contractor. Look, there's a lineup of contractors to make the house. And that's the best we can do. Oh, man, you know, one of my biggest regrets being on the left is seeing how successful the rhetorical conditioning has been. And I'll remind you as I'm going to play this, it's a four-minute segment. Look, I'm new to Republican politics, as you all know. I was a Democrat up until February of 08. Uh, I've been blunt with you throughout my entire radio career, which began in 1993. It's been on local radio, nationally syndicated radio, at new media. You know, I've been I've been honest with you. It's you know, it's not, and sometimes you don't like it, but you know what you're getting. But I'm I'm new to I voted for Republicans. I'm new to being in the Republican in 2008. Look, uh, all of us in this. This is what was fascinating about 2008. Why I was was wondering why are Republicans having to grab the barf bag with McCain? Why is that 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 happened? I've mentioned before, for you newbies, you should know the one guy I gave money to in the primary season for 08 was Romney. I was prepared to go for Giuliani all the way. God, what an F up he was. May, I am hoping maybe he learned things. I, I don't think he's going to be running again. I want everybody to get in, as you know. But look, uh, I, because McCain was so horrific. And of course, what's the problem? The problem is the Hillary problem. Romney blinked. Presuming that 2012 would be his for the taking. My, my point here is, is that I'm new and I, in the, the actual being in the realm of the conservatives and Republicans. 
And I remember being on the left, and, and we would laugh at how the Republicans, when push came to shove, would do nothing. And, and we relied on it then. And let me tell you, this is why Tea Party's freaking out the left so much. It has been generations of the left relying on and laughing at how the Re- Republicans would do nothing. And now it's a whole new ballgame. And that's why you see such desperation and horrible, vile things being said. We know this. And yet, I'm now getting a sense of, and again, it's I personally have to apologize for being a part of, in my case, a decade of reinforcing the conditioning. Uh, And with the media on your side, it's easy to do, you guys. It's not that Republicans or conservatives are especially vulnerable. You've been living in a media world that has, uh, uh, you know, helped push and condition conservatives and Republicans everywhere into believing that you can't compete unless you figure out what's going to sell for the country or what what who's going to be able to convince liberals for some reason when they're the smallest group of people in the country. Uh, it is a huge coup. For the for the for the, the liberals looking at the conservatives and in the particular the clip you're going to hear of two very smart women talking about electability. That's a joke. If somebody told you in 2005 and six that some guy with the middle name of Hussein. Who started his political career in the living room of a terrorist. Whose spiritual father and and. Uh, personal adoptive father effectively wants God to damn America who has no real clear positions on things for voting present and would spend 142 days in the Senate would become president of the United States in the midst of a crisis we would say he'd be unelectable wouldn't we under the old under the Republican rubric they are laughing at you now and they're laughing at what Ann and, and Laura were, were saying to each other last night. So there's a couple things I want to remind you of before I, I play this. One, it is more, it's one thing when we have the fingers on the keyboard and the no more free shots at Sarah Palin when, when you're dealing with the lamestream media. One of the problems here, and, and this is why many conservatives are uncomfortable, and we've talked about this at length, and I'm thinking perhaps additional people might be listening this morning to see exactly what I'll say about these two women whom I know. And uh, as acquaintances, I don't think one could call them my friend, but I know them, and professionally I appreciate them. They know me, and professionally I think appreciate me, but my goodness, I represent things that they also don't necessarily appreciate. I think that's a given. But we're all in this on this planet together here, right? And And we find those... Ways of it, and I, I'm I'm going into this because many of you are very upset about what was said about Palin, about the disappointment in Ingram and Coulter. And I'm I think I well, well I'm, what I'm going to do is just give you my opinion, and then you're going to weave that into yours. And what I first message here tonight is today is uh, to oh, and then I don't know. I think Eric Erickson had a messy diaper last night, and he went off also. Enough is enough. Stop it. It's funny, you know, I have to say, uh, yeah, we're getting close to things. They know Palin's going to announce, and they're panicked. And now they're going after you, supporters. And you should be proud, by the way, that there's a realization finally that Sarah Palin's supporters are, is the thing that gives her the strength to continue after everything she's faced. And that you will be the ones to make the difference and you cannot be duplicated for these other men out there and the other woman. It's not something that's going to be duplicated or transferred or co-opted. And now there's panic because it's not part of their next in line plan. But getting back to these comments, so there's several different things here. Disappointment, anger, uh, the fact now, again, be proud that you're under attack. Oh, I th- what did Erickson call you, a cult? Yeah, so what, Al Palin's everything from a bad tipper to a murderer to a cult leader. Gosh, if 
If she can get that much done and wear that many hats, she's exactly who we need. We can get actually stuff done. I'm wondering what what other hat can can fit on that woman. Yeah, uh, but so I, I always am giving you perspective about why people are saying what they're saying. But when it does come from people that you've liked, like Ingram and Coulter, it it's disappointing. I've warned you to expect this. I've warned you, you're going to learn about yourself in this process and you're going to learn about other people. And we're going to become, we're going to change. We've already changed a bit through this process. But here you've got, and let me just also remind you, even though, because we, when you're online, you can get into a very kind of cloistered view to sometimes. And that while what Ann Coulter thinks might, you, might matter to you because you liked her, Here's a newsflash, and Anne knows this, and so does Laura, and so does anybody else who's going to be going after you now and calling you names. But they realize they, that they can't affect Sarah Palin, so now they're going to want to affect you. I'll go into more detail on that later. And you know, one of the reasons why now you're shocking the conservative elite, or at least certainly the establishment or people with bosses, is because they've never seen this before. And th- that's a testament to how pathetic things have been on the Republican end. No wonder conservatives and Republicans have, have, at least certainly since Reagan, have done nothing and have said nothing and have been nowhere. You have been conditioned and told that there's a next in line and you've taken your medicine and you compromise. And this very same people, frankly, including, look, again, I'm new in this scene. Ann Coulter and Laura Ingram are not. And who's the president of the United States with all the genius ideas from even the conservative media? I'm still fascinated with the conservative media, and God bless their hearts, looking at our condition today. And they're the ones complaining and condemning the unconventionality of Sarah Palin and her supporters. Because somehow that's going to hurt the Republicans? All right. This is the one new thing. You take away the new thing, and we get what the Republicans have been for the last 30 years. And you get Barack freaking Hussein Obama is what you get. It's just like Obama's uh, uh, unemployment money plans. He's tried things, and they have failed. Why do it again? He's going to suggest the $300 billion on Thursday. It doesn't work. Why are you doing it again? And why are you desperate to not have something else be tried? So, you know, with all respect to Laura and and Anne, they have to admit, they've been doing this for a long time. And look where we are. It's fascinating. And, And I say this mostly because it's, you know, Laura mostly was agreeing with Anne and was co hosting, was a guest hosting for O'Reilly. And uh, the, the usual dynamic of that she is th- that dismissive, not electable thing. And this is my other point. All right, then if she's not electable, then she won't be elected. What's the problem? What's the problem? That, you know, it's funny. The people that complain about Sarah Palin supporters and that, that they're obsessive seem to be obsessing on Sarah Palin. Yeah. Uh, On the one hand, you've got people obsessing about attacking somebody else, Sarah Palin, versus, and this is what I feel, it's kind of sad for the Republican Party and certain conservatives, that because they've never seen, this is what you've got with Sarah Palin supporters, optimism, excitement, passion, and enthusiasm. And that is so foreign to the establishment they're frightened of it. They're terrified of what that is. It's amazing to watch. I am thrilled. When Tea Party started, Now we didn't know where it was going to lead. I was thrilled to see, and I knew what the left was going to do. I said when it began, oh God, am I happy I'm not on the left. This contradicts, Tea Party contradicts everything that the left relies on from the conservative movement. Mainly, passivity. Passivity. And as a result, we've got what we've got. And as a result, you have two very smart women talking about who's electable. 